Monsters are at the heart of many horror story. But in an RPG it's easy for monsters to become trivial. After all, your players have faced dozens, if not hundreds of monsters before. And they know the backlog of pop culture monsters by heart. So, let's try to put the horror back into the monster and the fear into your players. I will break this down into three parts. The concept of monster, the mechanics of monster and how to use your monsters in game. Let's get started. The concept. Every good horror monster at its heart is the incorporation of a fear. Vampires, for example, incorporate our fear of our own mortality for being the opposite. They are immortal, they are powerful, they are beautiful and they feed on us like we are livestock. Werewolves incorporate the fear of our animalistic side, our instincts to kill, to consume, to breed and the fear that it just takes a small push, maybe a full moon, for those instincts to sweep away all pretense of humanity. Zombies incorporate the fear of death and disease. They come at you an unstoppable horde and they turn your fellow humans, your friends and family to your potential death. That's oddly relevant in 2020. Godzilla incorporates the fear of the atomic bomb or in his later incarnations the fear of atomic power accidents, an unstoppable force that destroys whole cities. The alien uh, incorporates the fear of the alien. It is something that seems familiar at first glance but if you look closer, it is completely strange and different. And on top of that, it breeds you like a parasite wasp and eats you. Funny enough, half of the monsters I just mentioned have been the object of romance and erotic fiction. I guess our fear of death and our instinct to procreate are actually closely linked. So, if you're using an existing monster, keep in mind what is the fear that monster incorporates, what makes it horrible. For now, let's come up with our own monster. To use this principle, we first have to choose, come up with a fear. Don't worry if there are already monsters out there incorporating that specific fear. It's almost impossible to be completely original nowadays anyhow. Let's use the fear of the dark. The primal fear that there's a predator lurking just beyond the shine of your fire where you can't see them. Let's put one there. There are two routes you can take now to design your monster. You can either use magic or science. If you use magic to design your monster, you can get super wild with its origins and powers. Um, but if you use science, you obviously are limited by the rules of reality, by what we think might be possible. But at the same time, it grounds your monster in reality. It might be possible. And 
I think that is a bit of a scary thought in and of itself. So I will go with science for this one. I imagine a monster that can hunt for humans in the dark. So it needs some way to be able to perceive its prey in the dark. Something like a really good night eyes like cats have. Maybe uh, able to perceive infrared light like snakes or maybe fine sense of smell or hearing. Or maybe echolocation. Yeah, I think I'm going with echolocation like a bat for this one. I think we can have fun with that. I also want to make it a pack hunter because what is more scary than one monster out in the dark trying to eat you? It's a whole pack of them working together to bring you down. Now what kind of creature is it? What does it look like? You can go super wild here um, you know, for something octopus-like, fungi-like, insect-like. Uh, for example, it could be maybe it's an albino without eyes that has evolved in a cave where no light has shown for millions of years. But I imagine something that uh, blends into the shadows. Maybe it has a soft coat, a soft fur that swallows the light like black 2.0. So it is hard to see even if you shine a light its way. That means that our monster either has uh, fuel or a coat of soft feathers. So it's either a mammal, mammal-like or bird-like or maybe a feathered dinosaur. A sleek and agile creature with sharp claws and vicious teeth that has evolved in parallel with birds and has been hidden from humanity in some dark corner of the world. At this point we can put the monster into context with the world we want to put it in to uh, give it more of a design. There are a few options you can do there. Maybe it's just native to your world or maybe it comes from some place else, some other planet, other dimension. It came from a crashed spaceship, has been summoned through a magic portal. Or maybe your characters are alien to its world. Maybe they came through a portal or their spaceship crashed on its world where our Shadow Raptor is the Alpha Predator. Now that uh, we have a good idea of what our monster is, of what we want to achieve, let's go with the mechanics. Obviously the mechanics will depend a lot on the system you are playing. And it's easier to make a scary monster for Call of Cthulhu than, for example, D&D because the characters are just less powerful than in d d Also, it's easier to make a scary monster for a low-level d d group than for a high-level one. That is because the monster has to be deadly to the party to be scary. They have to want to avoid the confrontation with the monster if possible at all costs. Or to cite my last video, if your party encounters the monster unprepared, they should be forced to flee. So give the monster a really strong form of attack. Should have the potential to put a character out of combat with a single action. 
so either by massive damage or some sort of venom or magic something that blinds paralyzes maybe outright mind controls character bonus points if you manage to incorporate the fear that your monster is based on into that form of attack coming back to my shadow raptor example i will give it two forms of attack uh, one uh, strong physical with cloth and teeth doing enough damage to uh, take off all of the character's health with a single critical hit and half of it with a regular hit second a sonic attack the shadow raptor uses its echolocation organ to stun its prey with a supersonic blast a character hit by this uh, wouldn't even hear it but suddenly his eardrums would rupture would bleed out of his ears he would feel sick and off balance because his semicircular ducts in his inner ear would be damaged and all he would hear would be this really sharp tinnitus try fighting in the dark like that i can't really think of a way the shadow raptor could attack with darkness while staying inside the realm of science but of course it will always try to strike from darkness from stealth giving it a huge advantage the monster's threat should also not be easy for the party to neutralize that's easy if you have more than one monster for example uh, shadow raptor comes in a pack so if the characters manage to get lucky hit in and kill one of the shadow raptors there's always more where that came from but if you're using a singular monster you have to get a bit more creative so you could give the monster just a ton of hit points make it really big you could give the monster a form of regeneration if you don't kill it proper it will come back to kill you you can give it outright immunities maybe uh, regular weapons just pass through it like smoke you could even make the monster outright immortal so it can't be killed at all and has to be dealt with in another way maybe blast out into space or sent back to the hell whence it came maybe uh, trapped in an inescapable prison or some other form of magical protection like a shield or something bonus points if you can use the fear the monster is based on for this again for example with our shadow raptors it works quite natural because you can't hit a shadow raptor hidden in the darkness now you can think of a few ways to make an encounter with the monster interesting where would you encounter it uh, how would it fight what tactics would it use if you do this well you could even hound a low level party with something as simple as a starving wolf only let it attack at night in the rain when the party's not expecting it let it strike from stealth at the weakest member and then vanish right back into the darkness uh, don't let the party sleep so the wolf wears it down over time until they manage to get a lucky shot in or trap it somehow our shadow raptors would stalk the party in a pitch black jungle night the pack would encircle them take them unaware if possible they would make noise trying 
to go the party into separating. It would chase the party if they flee and attack the slowest party member once it falls behind. They will stay out of the light, out of sight, as long as possible, only revealing themselves when they are sure of a killing blow. Then they will use their sonic attacks to stun their prey and follow that up with claws and teeth, ripping their victims to shreds. I think we have a lot to work with here. I think we have a lot to work with here. Last, but not least, you should give your monster a weakness. If you don't, your PC's only option will be to flee. And that can become boring and frustrating. So give them some hope of defeating the monster. You can always crush that hope in the end if you so choose. If your monster is not all that strong to begin with, you don't have to be very creative with its weaknesses. So if it's, your monster is basically an animal, it can be killed by common weapons, or a zombie can be killed with a headshot. If your monster is of the singular and powerful kind, you have to become a bit more creative and more creative as the monster becomes more powerful. So a werewolf can't regenerate wounds it received from silver weapons, a vampire burns in the sunlight, the demon king might be vulnerable to the holy blade of the gods, and for Superman, you need kryptonite. One option here is to leave this blank for now and improvise it once the players search for a way to defeat the monster. They will usually come up with a creative way that you didn't even think of, and you might as well use that. For our Shadow Raptor example, we don't have to be that creative. If you can hit them, you can easily kill them. If you have strong enough lights, it makes it easier to see and hit them. Maybe your PCs can goad the raptors onto a clearing where the party has prepared powerful floodlights all around. Once the raptors are drawn in, they switch those on. A loud noise would probably mess with the raptor's echolocation and if they were to be hit by one of their own sonic attacks, they would be almost helpless. And finally you could just hunt them in the day, robbing them of their biggest advantage. With all of this in place, it's time to put our monsters in the game to use it. Most of that I explained last week in my Secrets of Horror video, so you can go watch that, but let me rehearse what I think are the most important points when using Monster. What is really horrible is the fear of the unknown. So use your monster sparsely and only give your players very limited and unreliable information about it. Doing this, you can even use monsters from the monster manual effectively. If, for example, the local villagers call trolls just swamp monsters and they can only give like conflicting descriptions of the monster, your party won't know what they're up against. Even then, use subjective reality to obscure the true nature of your monster. Describe what your PCs smell, hear and see, rather than telling them outright what your monster is. 
doing this uh, when you describe the uh, troll in the dark night in the swamp, your players might still not recognize it. And be fair. Give your PCs a warning before they run into your super powerful monster. Maybe let them hear rumors or find a badly mauled corpse. If you really want to surprise and shock the party with your monster, you can have an NPC accompany the party and then once the monster strikes it, instantly kills that one NPC, showing how powerful the monster is and that the party should really run. My final thoughts on this come back to how vampires and werewolves have become objects of erotic fiction. This strange fascination we have with monsters. If your players are okay with that kind of topic, you can use this to really mess with them, making them unsure if the monster wants to eat them or sleep with them. For example, um, maybe have a hauntingly beautiful vampire flirting with the party's paladin. After all, they like to play with their food. That is all I have for this video. So, how do you use monsters? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and goodbye.